Welcome to Postscript. Here we hope to answer your questions and help you dig deeper into the messages and sermons at FaithBridge by talking with the teacher of the day. Hi, and welcome to Postscript. I'm Luann Riley, and I'm here with Timothy Atik from Vertical Ministries, and he just talked about true worship. Welcome back, Timothy. So good to be yes, here. Yes, glad to have you back again. Um, we're going to take a look at really just some, some clarifications around some things you said and just speak more into um, worship and how that applies to small groups Great. and things like that. I'm going to start with a question that um, came in that um, I could have probably sent in myself. Sure. Um, my kids and I love to listen to KSBJ. And in the car, we're always singing loud. So should we be more careful about what we sing? Um, and that kind of ties into a second question that came in that um, I aspire to be what's in the song. Yeah. Does it make me a hypocrite if I'm singing those along with my kids? Or, or uh, can you speak yeah. more to that? Well, I think listening to KSBJ is such a healthy thing for you and your family to do because the, the Bible talks so much about the mind and dwelling on what is mm. true. And really transformation happens in our life. It starts with the mind. Mm -hmm. It you know, Be renewed by the, the trans, transformation of your mind. Paul says in Colossians 3, set your mind on things above. Philippians 4, 8, finally, whatever is true, right? He goes through a list, let your mind dwell on these things. So that is a good thing for you guys to do, to be singing along in the car. Psalm 100, make a joyful noise to the mm. Lord. Come into His presence with singing. Singing is biblical, and you are doing something big, biblical when you all sing together. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't feel like you need to impose any type of restrictions on your singing in the car. If anything, what I hope is the, the whole goal of the message, and I said this at the and but it's really just to help bring us back to reverence and so what a great opportunity in the car with your kids to just use those songs to talk about truth to pause sometimes and just say hey let's just talk real quick about what we're singing man i love how this song talks about god's grace or his love or that he's a father what does that mean for us and so it's god loves it when we sing to him and so sing freely and enjoy it but it's also good to be intentional and just say, okay, what are we singing? Mm -hmm. And this is a good family moment for us to just uh, continually be renewing our minds and And truth. not let the importance of the words yeah. or the meaning or the message just pass you by. Yeah. yeah, that's right. And in terms of, you know, the the bottom line is that we are all, um, we all continue to sin. And I, I even said it at the beginning of my talk, I think hypocrisy, a struggle with hypocrisy, is a part of the the Christian life and, and we are we are works in progress for the rest of our lives. And so, you know, there'll never be a moment where we don't need God's grace in our lives, which means anytime we sing, we're gonna be singing things that aren't one hundred percent genuine in our hearts and Praise God for His grace, mm. that it even covers over those moments. And that's why we can sing freely and confidently, knowing that God's grace sufficiently covers over mm. those moments where we say things that we don't mean, but we want, but we want to, to mean, mean those them. things. <laughs> I think that that goes a long way with God to just mm. say, you know what, my heart is willing, my flesh is weak, but that's what I want. And, you know, part of the Christian life is just reminding yourself of what you want to be true of you. and singing towards that helps you focus your efforts mm. that way. Good, Good word. Um, so uh, we had a question come in that's, that, that is asking, how do we get to the point um, where our speech when we're in worship and our vows that we make to God are honest, um, what should our prayer be as we're coming to church? How do we enter into that reverently? Yeah. yeah. I think it really comes down to reminding yourself of who you are coming to meet with. It's really, you know, the best thing that you can pray when you get into the room is, God, I want to encounter you this morning. So would you help me look past the person speaking and the person singing and help me to look to you mm. because I really want to encounter you. And even to, in that moment to ask God, God, remind me of who you are right now. Just in my mind, put a few of your attributes. Just remind me of who you are so that I'm more prepared. Okay, God, you are 
you are loving, you are gracious, you are kind, you are good. It just kind of jump starts your mind and kind of zeroes you in on who God is. And when you see him a little bit more clearly, it naturally will change your response. That's good. Does that make sense? That's good. And the next question is something that I, I think we all we all struggle with is um, you're you're praising God and you're coming here to worship and then these you even talked about them, these thoughts they creep in, whether they're um, away from what God wants or the fight in the car or the list of to-dos and, and your mind begins to spin in a different direction. How do we um, turn our thoughts back? How do we reclaim those yeah. moments? Well, you got to remember that the, the Christian life, it's a battle. Mm -hmm. It's a, I mean, there is a force against us when we come into this place because what we are doing here is glorifying God and there is an enemy that seeks to to steal God of all of his glory. So we should expect that battle to have those thoughts that tempt us to distract us. And so we um, those thoughts are going to come and I think it's it's a matter of you know, you might go through a worship service and get distracted 20 times in each of those 20 times to just say God. All right? I God cares about what we care about. So if you keep going to your to-do list, there's probably something on there that's stressing you out. Well, the Bible talks about that. Don't be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. So turn that distraction into worship to say, God, I'm not even going to sing right now. I need to deal with you on what's stressing me out. My to-do list is stressing me out. So God, I'm bringing this to you. And just reclaim that moment by taking what's distracting you and turning it toward God, mm. if that it's makes good. sense. It does. It's great. Um, one of the questions that comes in, um, oftentimes we get questions when we're teaching from an Old Testament passage, um, which I love that you taught from Ecclesiastes today. Um, and the question came in about the application of it. And I know you spoke to it a little bit at the yeah. end of the message, but just kind of speak into that again of um, does it change with the new covenant or with Jesus entering the picture? Does the application of this change? Well, I think, I think if anything, the, 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 app, the, the way that Jesus changes things is just that he brings us, we're not, we're not coming to God through a mediator. I mean, Christ is our mediator, but he has brought us to where we can connect with God directly. I mean, the, the veil has been torn so that we can enter the holy place, really. And so I think, you know, I think about what Paul says in Romans 5, 1. He says, therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him, that's Jesus, we have also obtained access by faith into this grace in which we stand. That word access is so key. But the idea here it says in this grace in which we stand, that word stand, it's confidence, which means we can step into God's presence and confidently stand in his grace, knowing that we are already loved, accepted, approved of. So there's nothing we can do in this moment which would bring condemnation upon us. So I think what Jesus has done is he's given us access to really step into the presence of God without fear of without fear of condemnation. So when our worship does have some hypocrisy in it, we can, we're able to, in that moment, just say, God, I'm sorry for that, and I'm moving forward, and there's no fear there. Mm. We can stand in His grace and move forward. And also, you know, it's, we're, we're able to worship God, not just here, but anywhere we go. You know, we worship in spirit and, and truth. that is such a good word for, um, our next question, which is talking about the confession, the confession in yeah. your talk. Um, and for me, in our in our Grow Group team, we desire for our communities to be a place where people can yeah. confess. And this person says that they want to be honest, but they fear sharing in their small group or they fear sharing these yeah. things where yeah. their confidence comes from the same place. Yep, yeah, mm -hmm. that's right. You know, the you have to remember, I, I, God started out in the, I mean, the beginning of creation, what did he say before he created Eve for Adam? He said, it is not good for man to be alone. And his mm -hmm. point is that he has wired us to live life in deep and meaningful relationships. And uh, he wants us to be fully known and, and fully loved. Like 
The Christian life is never meant to be lived in isolation. isolation. Like we need each other to be able to make it. So part of that is letting other people carry our burdens and it's, it's opening up and being honest. And so my encouragement to people is you need one, at least one or two people with whom you're fully known and fully loved where they can celebrate all of your successes, but then they've seen behind the curtain mm. and they know your weaknesses, your insecurities and your offensive tendencies. And um, so my encouragement is when you find those people, you need to be specific. There's this tendency in us to just want to generalize and say, well, I struggle with pride. I struggle with lust. Well, that's not going to be helpful. If you're, it, so I encourage people to always ask the question, what does that mean? Mm. What does that struggle mean? So if you tell me you struggle with lust, thank you for being honest with me. What does that specifically mean? Okay, how does that play out? Because only then can someone step in and just say, man, I love you enough. It, you're manipulating your diet in an unhealthy way. Thanks for telling me what that specifically looks like. Now I can step in and engage and encourage you in specific ways. Okay, you and your spouse are really struggling. And I know that we're talking, it's like an eight on the scale of one to 10 in severity. And it's not just like a two or three, like we're, we're picking at each other, but like we are, you, by being specific and being honest, mm. you're inviting key people in who can walk through life with you. I tell college mm. people all the time, you need a small army of men or women who are going to fight the battle with you because you're in a fight every day of your life. Someone is seeking to take you out. The best thing you can do is enlist some people. It's really uncomfortable to share, but it's also freeing to just, that's how you know you're truly loved is when someone hears all your junk and they don't run, mm. but then instead they say, I love you and I'm with you. There's nothing more enjoyable than feeling that love. I've shared some of the darkest things with people and I think that they're going to run and then they're just like, man, okay, we're going to fight. Let's, let's fight. And that's how I know that I'm loved and God uses his people to strengthen his people, fight for his people, lead his people to victory. That's awesome. And knowing whatever you're bringing to people, you've brought it before the throne Yep. and you're fully loved there. That's right. And you can move in confidence. That's exactly um, right. One more question yeah. before you yeah, go. Yeah. Um, it's very important. Uh, my daughter is going to be attending Baylor this fall, Sick says this person. Awesome. Um, so how does she get in, plugged in with Vertical Ministries? Perfect. First night of the semester at Baylor, August 24th, Vertical begins in Waco Hall center of campus, 9 p.m. It's going to be awesome. So they need to be there. Check out social media, which is at Vertical Waco on Twitter, Instagram, and then Facebook is, uh, you know, just Vertical Waco. Awesome. So, Good. Anyway. All so right. Glad so you got a new one coming. Yeah, Good. Excited. All right. Well, thank you for being here this yeah, week and we'll see it. you back here next week. Thanks. Great. And we'll see you back here next week for PostScript. Thank you. Thanks for joining us for PostScript. Help us keep the podcast interactive by submitting your questions during the morning services. Learn more at faithbridge.org slash postscript.